Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome to Lender Fintech's weekly news roundup. My name is Peter Renton, chairman and co-founder of Lender Fintech, and I'm joined by my good friend and colleague, Todd Anderson. How are you doing, Todd? I'm good, Peter. How are you? Doing great. And we also have our special guest today, Tim Lee from Alchemy. How are you doing, Tim? Hello, hello. Doing very well. Thank you for asking. Okay, so before we get going, just quick, why don't you do a quick intro, Tim, about yourself and about Alchemy? Sure. Um, Tim Lee, founder and CEO of, of Alchemy. We build uh, software for banks, fintech uh, companies, and lately, buy now, pay later, and point of sale financing firms. I've been doing that for five years now, so happy to be here. All right. Well, let's get straight into it with some buy now, pay later news. It actually came out late last Friday, um, a firm and Amazon. So this was really interesting. I mean, I think it's 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 the biggest partnership that you could possibly have. Any company in the world, the biggest partnership they could possibly have would be Amazon um, for you know for the, for on for buy now pay later. And a firm has nailed it. I, I actually went onto my Amazon account over the weekend. And it's not available to me yet, but uh, they say they're rolling it out, rolling it out slowly. But you know, it's this this kind of deal. What was fascinating? We had our reporter do some digging. Um, and he found out that, you know, why why would you have the biggest announcement in the history of your company come out at 4.30 p.m. Eastern time on a Friday afternoon? Um, the only reason would be uh, would be because it was about to leak. And what some, some of the Reddit guys on Wall Street Bets um, uh, looked like they had discovered, they'd gone into the, the code and they, they've kind of figured out that uh, a firm was going to be an option uh, in, inside Amazon. I don't know how these people figure these things out. Maybe you have a better idea, Tim, but it is uh, <laughs> yeah, too much time was, in their it, hands. It was, it was crazy. Okay. And uh, anyway, what, what do you guys think of this biggest buy now, pay later partnership? I mean, it's, it's obviously great news for a firm and, and Amazon. Um, it's, if I was a, a credit card company, I'd be getting more and more worried when you're starting mm -hmm. to combine the reach of Amazon with whether it be a firm or, or Afterpay, whoever, but just the reach of Amazon. Now they have Walmart, the biggest store uh, in the U.S. They have Amazon, which is you know well beyond the U.S. Uh, I know. I think they're just starting in the U.S. to, to begin with with this partnership, but... Yeah, you begin to go into almost every corner of the U.S. and offer such a simple, flexible option with none mm -hmm. of that fine print jargon that comes along with a credit card. Mm -hmm. And people begin to go, hmm, you know, this makes it feel like I'm not paying that much for something right now. I can pay $20 over four months and it's $85, whatever it might be, versus $85. And how do I compound that with my interest rate and... Mm -hmm. And so the simple nature of it is a big deal. And then the reach that Amazon has. And if I'm a traditional credit card company, I'm getting a bit worried. If I'm a traditional bank, this is where they begin to get more and more worried. Now, it won't happen overnight, but more partnerships like this um, is where fintech and um, you know the, the power of big tech come together to form something that's really really scary at least from the traditional point of view yeah it's a absolutely phenomenal deal uh, a year and a half ago they uh, announced um the walmart uh deal at yep. lended i believe right and, yep and uh, this amazon deal just blows my mind first my first reaction was why can't amazon build it themselves uh, right, they build everything else, including sure. a lunar lander. I think, uh, <laughs> <laughs> why can't it do it themselves? And uh, you know, I guess you, you can't just do all the innovation in house, right? Even the largest companies in the world, um, you know, needs partnerships. Uh, it's absolutely insane. I mean, he probably doesn't want to get one upped by Jack Dorsey, who bought Afterpay, which is yeah. a huge firm. But culturally speaking, this whole delay gratification of our culture is very interesting, and it's not just the U.S. If you look at place like India, everybody's look, using lazy pay, which is their versions of, you know, uh, yep. buy now, pay later, down to the movie tickets, down to the movie tickets. It's crazy. We're not even talking about large uh, spendings, like, you know, $12 of a movie ticket, people want to pay in four payments. It's just the way of life. Uh, and their version of Uber Eats has all of these delayed gratification payment methods. $20 meal, pay in four, four payments. Everybody's using it. I feel like this buy now, pay later, it's catapulting this whole plastic generation which is credit cards right. especially in latin america some part of asia hey 
why pay in 30 days? I can pay in 300 days. Yeah. <laughs> and with no interest bearing. Like right. That's the thing. That's the thing that uh, I, I've always appreciated Max Levchin's message. He's, he, he was at, uh, it was in, I think it was 2019 when he talked about, you compared credit card companies to payday lenders because they, they want you to revolve your debt forever. Mm-hmm. And they and, and they hide the terms of what you're actually going to be paying. So, and there's there's some truth to that. But I think the the the, the new generation are, are showing they hate credit cards. They don't. They they, they like um, buy now pay later. They like debit cards. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, you know, this you know you, it's only a very small percentage of the of, of you know of commerce is being done on buy now pay later, and it's uh, this is it's going to explode. I mean, what? Oh, who's yeah. to say that ten percent of retail sales isn't done with buy now pay later in five years' time? That's certainly not out of the question, and that would be monstrous. You're talking trillions of dollars. I mean, do and, we get to the point where I go food shopping and do it? Sure. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I think you know, the, the possibilities are endless. Where yeah. you know, and and then it gets into a different web of, of conversations mm-hmm. in, in terms of, um, you know, credit and, and, you know, who does what with what, right. um, but it's, it's, it's becoming on its path. At least it's becoming mm-hmm. so simple that almost any purchase I make is I could split it up in four payments. Yep. Yeah. It's, yes. it's, it's quite astonishing how quickly it's, it's starting yeah. to shift. It has a long way to go in terms of the amount that's done, but, it's quickly becoming right there with an option of, I mean, almost every purchase I go to, I see the little, the logos choose right. after pay, choose a firm, choose after pay, choose. A firm. And I think, it's, I think that the, the real, um, the, the sleeping giant here is I think Apple with their Goldman Sachs relationship. They, their Apple is going to come out with a buy now pay later option. Mm-hmm. That's, that's inside Apple wallet. Yes. That, I just, that, yeah. Yeah, will I just be, talked to, a client with a credit card what they're doing now and it's just it's credit card companies are, are waking up to this right so what they're saying now is that you can swap your credit card just like whatever you want to do but you can set something in the settings to say if it's above $50 I'll make that purchase buy now pay later yeah. if it's above $100 but every smaller transaction, I'll pay it off in 30 days. It's like a break. And you can also retroactive and go back now with credit cards and say that $500 purchase, I can turn that into whatever the version 24 of final. installments. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And so right. it's, it's but becoming before, real interesting. That one was interest bearing. You got to pay yeah. interest on it right yeah. now. It's like, Hey, just pay for payments. We're going right. to, we're going to get the merchants to eat that cost. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's where I think we're going they to see. Coming. Rebattle this battle, <laughs> right? And I, because Visa and Mastercard are not getting any, any, uh, you know, any, 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 any fees with if someone plays pays with a firm on on Amazon, that's they're out of they're out of the equation, and that's not going to sit well with them. And I know exactly. that they're now, you know, I think both both companies have a buy now pay later offering where you can do it, mm-hmm. but it's it's really it's it's not out there yet. It hasn't got it hasn't got a public awareness, but right. Yeah, they need to. They need to get their act together. I think they've probably been surprised by how fast this is. Right. Going. I think the biggest nuance here is that credit card companies can only go down to six eighty, six sixty FICO. Right. Between all three of us, right? Buy now, pay later. When the merchants are holding the risk, they can go down to four, four five hundred. So right. you can automatically expand. A, and a lot of a, them a have a bunch that's... of people they can do business with. And yep. a lot of them have the simple model that as long as those payments are paid, then we don't have to shut off the credit. It's all right. You know, whoever this person is, they've made their four payments in the previous purchase. Right. They're good next time. Yep. They made those and four. They're good. They're good. Yep. They're good. As long as you make those payments, right. you're essentially credit is not turned off. Yeah. And they can report that to the bureaus and to help them build credit. Yep. Yeah. The best of both worlds. It's a financial, financial health, uh, you know, potential, potential right. for that. And, you know, like Afterpay, you know, they, they don't do credit checks. You can just go yeah, and pay with Afterpay. And I'm not sure what the number is of $50 or $100 or whatever it is, but you just get it. And then if obviously you don't make your first payment after two weeks, you're, you know, they're going to they're gonna freeze your account. Right. But they will, no credit checks. So that, that's, that's also, I think, how, how, how you know, Afterpay has sort of exploded as well. But yeah. anyway, we could talk for the next, uh, for the whole 30 <laughs> minutes on this deal, I know, because it really is fascinating. I'm, I'm actually in the middle of writing a piece about it, which will be published by the end of the day, I hope. I hope. But um, we are now, we, we should move on because there are, there's actually lots of interesting stories happening this week. For example, Robinhood, um, 
well, it's not really about Robin Hood. It's about the SEC. The SEC said that a full, like the basically payment for order flow, which is how Robin Hood does 80% of their transactions is through a payment for by order flow. Or 80% of the revenue comes from payment by order flow. I should, I should correct myself. But the SEC has said that a full ban of payment by order flow is being considered and uh, really is, I think, mm. just fascinating. I mean, Bloomberg had a piece saying, you know, don't panic. It's not, it's actually a bigger deal for the big institutional trading trading houses than it is for Robin Hood. Uh, I, I, I don't know exactly if that's true, but it really, it's, it's going to be interesting because payment, but payment for order flow has what is what has provided us with free stock trading. And I don't think we can go back. There's no you, going back. You can't There's go no back. No way. So, yeah, it's funny. I was watching an analyst. I forget the the name of the person, but he's he's critical of high frequency trading. He used to be in the space, and now is more critical of it. Um, he doesn't think it's going away. Now it might be readjusted some way, um, but there's too many powerful players that rely on this for it just to automatically go away. I mean, throw Robinhood out the window. There's the traditional firms, TD, Schwab, there's all kinds of other players that we probably don't even know or mention that rely on all this stuff way in the background mm. that uh, work with probably the biggest funds and trading houses in the world. So the lobbying effort behind the scenes, I know, you know, SEC is going to come out and they're going to say, you know, Robin Hood, payment for order flow, this will all sound good. But in reality, some things will be changed, but no way this practice goes away. At least I don't think so. And there's zero chance we can go back from fees to no fees, then back to fees. When yeah, everything in fintech mm -hmm. and banking today is about ridding everything of fees, there's no way they get, all right, we're just going to bring the fees back. <laughs> right. There is a interesting conflict of interest, which is what that SEC person was saying, right? right. If you're incentivizing yeah. everybody to bring all the trades to your thing and you charge a fee, uh, then you're you're making your market in an interesting way, but so is buy now pay later. So is everything else, right? Hey, merchant, bring your stuff. Use my checkout option. I'll give you a better discount rate than anybody else. Than mm -hmm. credit card. It's just all circuit of fees. This whole world is a giant conflict of interest. Yep. You don't, you know, <laughs> has to, you know, somebody has to pay the fee at the end of the day, right? Uh, it's not going to go away. I think it's just going to be talked about for a while, um, and just. They're, they have better things to worry about. Anyway. But what what is what is the cost of an equity transaction run through Robinhood? I mean, it's got to be in the fractions of a penny, right? Uh, would be my guess by now. So, I'm sure the, the the in the boardrooms of you know of companies like Robinhood, they're thinking about well, what what will happen? Because they can't like then there's no way that Robinhood can come and say, even if they say, look, we want to charge you 25 cents for a trade. And people are going to say, no, 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 it's supposed to be free. There's going to be massive friction, so they've got to be thinking about what is how the, do we get on the cost like, and figure out a different revenue yeah, source to yeah. offset it. That's probably yeah. what they're thinking. I don't know. Uh, they, uh, you know, like I, I think you know, th there's the pro version of Robinhood. I think like Acorns Pro, uh, Robinhood yeah. Pro. The pro version, um, you could do, you know, other activities, right? That's probably where they can actually, you know, push some of the fees to the pro traders. Right. Um, to appease SEC, right? But for their common regular plan, they still probably want to keep it free. I mean, it's a give and take. They have to do something to, to make SEC think that this is not a giant, complete giant of conflict of interest. Right. Different right. levels of service. Well, I, mean, I, I always wonder why Robinhood are probably big enough now they could be their own market maker and they could sort of, you know, with a lot of the lot of the stocks they're trading, they could just they could just do it all internally. Yeah. Anyway, we're just speculating, but clearly this is a big this is a big deal. Let's move on. I want to talk about um, PayPal because they now, um, you know, PayPal started you know started offering crypto trading uh, late last year, and now they are they want to get they're potentially getting into equity mm -hmm. trading. Just they they're going to go up head to head with Robinhood. You know, it's going to be it's going to be free. It's going to be payment for order flow, um, but. I think you know the 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 the, 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 the they will, they see this massive market. Ten million people supposedly, more than ten million people, have started trading equities this year, and uh, that's that's just a massive number. And PayPal have a massive user base, and they they said, well, I'm sure their customers are asking them for it, and uh, they they see Square, they see Robinhood as as really big competitors, and they want to you know, they want to 
put their they want to be a one stop shop for for their for their customers. And it's, uh, it's super interesting. There's a new, already a new division, Invest at PayPal, that is that is um, out there, yeah. and uh, you know PayPal apparently Dan um, Dan Shul- Shulman in his um, one of his one of his earnings reports uh, talked about how they're going to be doing all sorts of things on the investment front. So this this looks like it's uh, it's a big step in that direction. I mean, similar to Amazon, who partners with a firm to keep them in the Amazon ecosystem. To Apple, partners with Goldman, keep them in the ecosystem. People use PayPal, <clears throat> keep them in the PayPal ecosystem. I mean, it's all the fight for. Why am I going to let the customer go somewhere when I can offer that right. tool here and keep them within our ecosystem and the partners that we work with so we can share if there's a fee somewhere? I mean, essentially, it all comes down to these different ecosystems that are all um, propping up. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, the the only thing I'd say on the trading front is I don't think there is going back to this pre-COVID where there's a lot less in terms of retail traders active it does have a shelf life to a certain extent because once we do hit a serious downturn it's not like these people are going to keep playing in the market as if it's and they're playing in the market in part because of the market's performance right Um, i do Mm -hmm. think they won't just disappear i think they'll then come back as the market comes up because i do think the crop of people that have entered the system aren't just going to fully dis it you know, go away and disinvest from the system. Um, but I also think it's not just going to jump to 20 million, 40 million, 60 million people right. in, in the next couple yeah. of years. I think there's a bit of a, a, a ceiling to hit, and but it's still a, a, a pretty significant group yeah. to go after. And then it's how do I find the best deal on either Robinhood or TD or Schwab or PayPal or SoFi? Like, you're going to eventually have these people kind of jumping around to find out which one suits me best. Mm-hmm. And yes. if PayPal's in it, those that trust PayPal a little bit more will stop going to SoFi or someone else and they'll just stay with mm-hmm. PayPal. So they're trying to find which group of that 10 to 20 yeah. million traders is their group. They can only win out of this deal, right? Existing PayPal customers can now trade on PayPal. God knows everybody on this call probably have some balance there. Um, And I'm teaching my USC FinTech Fundamentals class now. We just talked about this in class yesterday. I sample all of my students, Acorn, Robinhood, um, Coinbase, and Blockchain.com, right? These are all the platforms that kids use today to trade. Nobody right. mentioned PayPal. Well, PayPal doesn't have this, but you know they need to acquire younger customers. I think this, it's yeah. um, PayPal might become you know obsolete or passe. You know, right. Well, that's the thing. Pa- I think I think you're dead right there. I think in the younger crowd, no one really thinks mm-hmm. about PayPal. No, um, yeah. that's just something sexy. Even they use Venmo, not PayPal. Yeah, to transact. Yeah, that's true. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway, let's uh, let's move on. Um, speaking of crypto, interesting piece in the Wall Street Journal uh, talking about. Uh, Avanti and Kraken, these are both banks that, uh, that, that have been approved in Wyoming. Uh, they've got a special, a special state charter there for banks. Um, they, want to, they want to basically get access to the Federal Reserve payment system. And that is, uh, that has been just the purview of, of nationally chartered banks. Um, and it is really a, well, not, 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 I should say nationally owned state chartered banks, but traditional banks. This, um, you know, this the banks are arguing. The bank, some of the bank trade groups are saying, "Well, you know, these 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 new banks are kind of lightly regulated. They're not, and that's just it's such crap." Because I think what what Avanti and Kraken have to go through is actually probably more rigorous. I think than most of the most of the other most of the banks do. It's just different. It's a different type of. Uh, of regulation, but uh, Caitlin Long, I was watched on LinkedIn just uh, earlier this week, where she confirmed that's what they're doing. Apparently, they put in an application with the Federal Reserve last month. I don't think this is going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen this year. Um, prob- may not be next year, but uh, eventually, I think a crypto bank is going to have access to Fed payments and the Fed payment system, and then they they will be you know able to compete. You'll be able to suddenly use crypto to. To, as a as a payments mechanism, much much more readily than you can now. Just like and there's no going back with trading fees once they're in the system. Yes. There's no going back. So the banks are probably lobbying hard behind the scenes to keep them out as long as possible. 
because once yeah. one one gets access, that's it. It's over. Yeah. So um, that's what I. Th- I mean, I I agree. Eventually, it gets there. Um, banks are just using their their weight as as long as they can to to push the can and push the can a little bit further down the road. Um, though someone forward thinking eventually is going to be like this. Mm-hmm. You know, we need to stop this. And, yeah. Um, the get the catalyst the, yep. might be um, the uh, the can- cannabis banking bill. I think it's on the uh, the uh, floor of one of the houses. Mm-hmm. I want to say cannabis might get access to a national banking before crypto does, and that might be a catalyst for everything else. Uh, yeah, that's quite a possible. Piece of legislation out there that guy has. That, that yeah, that's that's access. inevitable. I think as more and more, st- mm-hmm. it's inevitable that the if they know. can figure out AML and tax, right. they will let anything to transact. That's what they need: yep. tax money. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's, a, it's, uh, it's, it's it's relatively simple when you break it down in that way. <laughs> as long as they know yep. who you are and if you can pay tax. Yeah, not a terrorist. You can pay tax. Come on, come on in. You can trade cattle for all they care. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. And just before we move on, just one one stat which I thought was staggering to me: uh, the Fed, the Federal Reserve processes. This was on the, I think from the Bloomberg article or, or the Wall Street, what Wall Street Journal article, I think it was. Nine hundred trillion dollars in payments in twenty twenty. That's not nine hundred billion. That's nine hundred trillion dollars in payments processed through the Federal Reserve payment system. That is astounding to me. Tall zeros. Yeah. Lots of zeros. Yeah, zeros. Gonna, nice gonna, they're going to be talking in quadrillions soon. Um, anyway, let's uh, let's move on. Citizens Bank of Edmund, Jill Castilla, good friend of lenders, spoken many times. She's a real innovator in the in the banking space. Uh, you know, pretty small community bank, three hundred and fifty million dollars in assets. In a, you know, just I think they're just outside of Tulsa, um, in Oklahoma. And this was interesting because I, I saw the headline, but you don't actually, you don't, we don't actually know much. But she's they're basically she's launching a digital bank, a national digital bank uh, before the end of the year. Is what they said, partnering with Moven, uh, Brett King's company that got out of the retail retail banking business last year, um, and they're going to be using their platform to launch uh, a digital bank. And she just says it's targeting a specific affinity. I've got a guess. I think it's going to be veterans because she is a veteran. Yep. Um, and uh, I think she says it's a, it's a group that she feels a lot of uh, love for. And so, and they're really, and you think about it, is there a veterans? I mean, we've got lots of different niches on affinity banks. I don't think I know of a veterans there was the, one. Um, <clears throat> what was the lender that focused on veterans? Street shares. Yeah. Street shares, yeah. So, Street shares. But, don't we have yeah, USAA? Yeah. yeah. USA doing this? Well, USAA, Navy, yeah, that's, that's Navy, only for federal. veterans. And Navy Navy Federal Federal Credit Union too. Yeah. So you have those, but you know, this is how small community banks are going to survive, which yep. is how do we create a digital brand that takes our feel mm-hmm. from this one, two, three, five branch network in Oklahoma or wherever small town. And then boom, let's make it nationwide and, and find like-minded people who we can serve in a similar way that we serve here at home. And if they can do that, then I think they're on their way to surviving. If they can't, eventually they'll probably be acquired by a big or a digital bank. Um, mm-hmm. And that's that's the way I see it, see it playing out over and over again. Mm. So okay. pretty smart move. Yep, yep, let's move on. Um, we got two more two more things I want to talk about before we finish, and we have just got a few minutes left. So uh, there was an interesting uh, Ron Shevlin in his weekly column. We often uh, talk about him on this show, uh, his columns. Yeah, this was basically um, a summary of a report that he did um, with uh, his 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 firm Cornerstone and uh, Maniga. And uh, I think they're they're a European uh, based bank focused on uh, on uh, on climate issues. And so this was this is about the the rise of climate conscious consumers and the climate change opportunity in banking. So really interesting. They did a lot. Of, they did a survey of three thousand plus people uh, talking about different different preferences they have around climate change and around banking. And what was one of the interesting takeaways is that people um, you know people. Even people who are passionate about climate change don't measure their cl- their their carbon footprint because it's it's just very difficult to do that. There's no uh, there hasn't really been tools to do it. He 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 actually even put the put it forward that maybe a, 
one of the banks could really corner this market and make create a, a, a wide a widely used tool to to do this. Um, you know, they said there's lots of opportunities for banks in this space, and it really is pretty wide open. You got Aspiration that they're they're going public via SPAC. You got a couple of others that are, are, are pretty nascent, and um, there's really no there's no brand yet that has really got a nationwide awareness as being the the climate friendly bank and it's it, it should have it should have it should have happened by now but this is it, basically the report saying this is wide open right now and if you look at what just happened in new orleans and tracked right up here yep. the more incidents like this the more aware people become of what the things in their life are doing related to climate. So mm -hmm. if I hear that my bank is associated with fossil fuel companies, then I'm going to go, you know, I just had the first flood in my house mm -hmm. in 20, 50 years. Mm -hmm. And now they're saying it could happen every two years. Like, well, what's going on here? The, people need to more relate it to their lives, which I think is continuing to happen because these incidents and these weather related events just are getting worse and worse in more frequency. And so that I think will also help accelerate it because in most ways, unless it's connected to you personally, that's right. It's, it's disconnected. That's right. That's and right. So you, you don't think of it as, as impacting you as much, but if that's you've right. just been through a hurricane, destroyed your house, that's right. I'm, it becomes personal. I'm, I'm waiting for Tesla to come out uh, with a bank. They just released a new piece of software um, where you can actually link up every Tesla solar panel on your roofs and create a virtual power plant to send energy back into the grid to help resident environment. In Texas, if you read the news, they submitted a uh, uh, application to sell these excess energy off of people's rooftops back into Texas grid to make money uh, for uh, panel owners. So they're getting into, th I mean, Elon Musk came out of PayPal, right? He was part of the PayPal yeah. mafia, right? Yep. So I'm, I'm just waiting for Tesla to come out with this stuff that is so connected, like what Todd said, to your day-to-day -day life, whether it's a car, panel, battery, whatever, whatever it might be, to come out with some kind of a insurance or some kind of a banking option that is tied to, um, that, that's tied to environmental uh, thoughts, if you will. Yeah. Right. Because it's, is right there tied to the tied directly to it anyway they, they could do it i'm sure that i'm sure that thought is being the idea is at least uh mm -hmm. being discussed because they, they have i mean they already have a big i mean they're in the they're in the we've had we've had people from tesla speak at, at lend it where because mm -hmm. they're in you know they have a, they have a big financial services division there with all of the leasing they do and the securitizations uh, that that's right up all those all those uh, leases and it's yeah so they're there they already have a financial services footprint right. it's just uh do they want to go and uh, make it become i don't know if they want to become a retail bank like i said the opportunity is there someone's going to own it someone's going to be the tesla of banking it could be tesla but uh, right. as far as you know the, the most environmentally friendly but uh super interesting anyway we're almost out of time one more story and this is bookending with the buy now pay later uh beginning funding circle in the uk uh, has uh, released a buy now, pay later option for SMEs. And I've been wondering when this is going to, when someone's going to do this because it's all the buy now, pay later options are for consumers uh, pretty much. But they have, they have released it. It's just a simple three payments, three monthly chunks. So you pay off, uh, basically paying it off in three months. Funding circle fronts the entire money. It's basically a, it's basically a, a, a three month installment loan. Um, yeah. That funding circle is going to offer, and it's not—it's mm -hmm. not going to be free like like Afterpay, but it, um, you know, it, it's basically it's for two thousand pounds to thirty thousand pounds. They've been testing it out, but this is another massive untapped market that it, people like um, buy now pay later, and it's not available for small business, and it should be. Mm -hmm. Massive, absolutely. I was thinking that Square uh, bought Afterpay will start doing this, but you know. Uh, one of the OGs into this industry, funding circles getting into it. It's it's absolutely massive. Yep, and Square yeah. could well do it. Quick could well be having plans to do it as well. Funding circle has a, if they're a big player in the UK. They're not as big here, um, and uh, even if they do release it here, it's not going to be a massive massive uh, product. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, uh, it makes most sense in you know if I'm a business, I need to purchase you know ten laptops, right? 
do something like that paid off in a few installments. Like from my, yeah, I just hired a few people. Let's get, you know, some new chairs, technology. Tables. Right. Yeah. Let's do that. And, and yep. it, it's better than going through a full, you know, loan process to, for, mm -hmm. uh, your working capital. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's rent to option. own. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's rent to own. To, exactly. To leasing, it's something I saw own. on, uh, uh, LinkedIn the other day, like buy yeah. now, pay later has been a 200 year old product. It's called yeah. layaway. <laughs> it is layaway. Yeah. It's yeah, like that's what it was. Yeah, I remember, I remember learning about it when I was a kid that, uh, but they'd actually take the product and put it behind the counter. You didn't get it. Right. Reverse layaway. You get it. Yeah. Reverse layaway. <laughs> yeah. You didn't get it until you paid it off in full. That's right. But, uh, anyway, we are, we are now out of time. Um, thank you. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Todd. Thank Thanks, you, Tim. everybody. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We'll be back same time next week um, for another edition of Lender Fintech Weekly News. Have yourself a great long weekend, everybody. See you. Bye-bye. Okay. Enjoyed it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.